Well, 2020 is finally over, and that means award season will be starting soon. Now, the Oscars have been pushed back until April. However, the Grammy nominations were already announced in November, and I think we can all agree they were a disaster. The Grammys have been known for making bad calls, such as choosing Macklemore's The Heist for Best Rap Album of the Year over pretty much every other better option, like Kanye's Yeezus or Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid Mad City. Or, for example, naming Adele's 25 over Beyonce's Lemonade, which Adele herself even agreed was a bad call. I can't possibly accept this award. The Lemonade album was just... So monumental, Beyonce. It was so monumental. Or making really weird calls like naming Steely Dan for Album of the Year, or Mumford and Sons Babel over Channel Orange, or Herbie Hancock over Amy Winehouse. Now, these are all disappointing because we didn't see great albums that were nominated actually win like they deserved. However, this year, one of the best albums and artists of the year was completely shut out of the nominations The Weeknd. His album, After Hours, spent weeks at the top of the charts, and his single, Blinding Lights, broke records on the charts. Not only that, but it was also well-received by critics. However, he got no nominations in any categories. This is total prejudice against The Weeknd, especially when other songs like Yummy by Justin Bieber were nominated above him. Now, don't get me wrong, I love award shows like the Grammys, and I want great art to be awarded and lesser-known works of art to be recognized which is why I'm okay with decisions like naming Beck's Morning Phase or Arcade Fire's The Suburbs as Album of the Year, despite not being as mainstream as other nominations. With decisions like these, the Grammys like to show that they recognize the artistry and critical acclaim over commercial success. However, then we take this year, where the Album of the Year nominations are a total mess. Albums like Fiona Apple's Fetch the Bolt Cutters aren't even among the nominees, even though it's by far the most critically acclaimed album of the year, topping the list of every critic's list for best album of 2020. So if they don't recognize critically acclaimed albums across the board, then maybe they want to recognize something commercially successful instead. Except how can that be the case when After Hours was completely left out? Instead, we have albums like Coldplay's Everyday Life, Chalumbo, and the Black Pumas album, which was released last year, but made it on this year's list as a deluxe edition. Now, I'm not saying that these are bad albums. In fact, I'm a big Coldplay fan, and I like a lot of the songs on that record. And I'm a Jacob Collier fangirl, just like everybody else. I mean, the kid is a genius. But why on earth were these chosen over albums that were better received by critics and audiences, like Fetch the Bolt Cutters, RTJ4, Punisher, or After Hours? Where is the thought process with these nominations? Where's the consistency? And here's where we see the problem with the Grammys, and essentially all award shows. Each is run by a single body of industry members who decide for themselves what the best music of the year is. Because of this, these members can pick their favorite artists or artists that they have connections with, and totally blacklist other artists who they don't like. In this case, The Weeknd. They also have to pick artists that will look good performing at the Grammys and bring viewers, so they can't pick albums that are too weird or artsy, which is totally ridiculous. When it comes to Album of the Year, only a small committee of 15 to 30 people end up reviewing the nominees. At that point, those 15 to 30 members can pretty much nominate whatever albums they like best and bump up artists that they have connections with. We've all heard the stories of the previous Grammy CEO who was let go after only a short period of time for exposing how corrupt and rigged the Grammys were. She said in her own words how rigged the process is and how there are people within the nomination body who have interest in those who get nominated. It's absolutely corrupt and they do their best to hide it. The nominating process has the involvement of people who have an interest in the nominations. Absolutely. And not just the artists, it's the, the, the mem people who have business affiliations with the artists as Could well. Could represent the artists. Are in the room. Yeah. Now, the Recording Academy can do whatever they please as a business. They are their own organization, and the members do have valuable insights into music and the industry that the rest of us don't have. And sure, we can support that if we want. However, there's a better way to determine what the best album of the year is besides leaving it up to this small, select group of people with their own prejudices, self-interests, and biases. 
That's why we've created a better award show and a better way to recognize and award the finest in arts for a year. We've called it the All Arts Awards. Let's start with recognizing excellence in music and how we would determine things such as Album of the Year. The main idea is that instead of one body of industry members deciding the outcome, everyone would get a say. The nomination process and voting processes are comprised of three separate voting bodies. The voice of the general public or the consumers like most people. The voice of the critics in the industry who are employed to review and rate music and the actual industry members or musicians themselves who can comprehend the artistry behind the music better than the average person. If you're just looking for the opinions of the industry members, then sure, go with the Grammys. However, look at how that's turning out for recognizing great music. With this system, we get the voices and opinions of pretty much every person who consumes music. Now, you might be concerned that the general public, which would make up the most members, would outvote by far the critics and industry members' opinions. I think it's safe to assume that this year something like Folklore by Taylor Swift or the new BTS album would by far get the most votes. But that doesn't mean that they should be declared Album of the Year automatically. While these albums may win the general public vote, the critics might push for Fiona Apple's album or Run the Jewels 4 more, and the industry members might vote more for Future Nostalgia from Dua Lipa or The Hyam Record, or maybe even the Coldplay album. That's why the results of each voting body are weighed equally against each other and averaged against each other equally. So each body has the same amount of say in the outcome, despite the actual number of votes the album gets. That way we're determining what the best album is across the board. In this example, I have Folklore by Taylor Swift is found to be high on each of the three lists. So in this case, Folklore would be declared the winner, even though it's not technically ranked number one in any category. There is much more to go into detail with as far as how the nominations are determined, how other categories would work like Best Song and Best New Artist, and how the point system would work, which is why we have another video out explaining how the whole nominations process works. So make sure to check it out on the All Arts YouTube channel or on our website. You can actually vote now on our website, allarts.com, and register as either a general member, a critic, or a musician or industry member. In summary, I just want to emphasize that I don't think the Grammys are completely useless and make bad decisions all the time, but when you're declaring something as the best album of the year, this is not done through this small group of biased industry members. We are really excited to get this off the ground, so make sure to vote by clicking the link in the description so you can be a part of determining what the best album of the year actually is for 2020.